Good evening, Buckaroos. We're joined again today by David Mullick, and this time we'll be discussing Darkseed 2. For those who may be unaware, could you introduce yourself and the role you played in developing Darkseed 2? Certainly, I was the uh, producer of Darkseed 2. Uh, <laughs> that was my role, basically. I was in charge of, of development of the game. Well, now that you've been introduced, let's get right into the questions. Uh, you know, there is an old rumor that the development of Dark Sea 2 was halted by a computer virus. Is there any truth to this? Was there any ever any major setback in production? I've never even heard that rumor before. No, I, I don't recall a computer virus at all affecting the development of the game. Funny thing, like, I think that rumor actually started because of a trailer, because people saw a difference in the animation, and they, they sort of just fabricated this idea there was some sort of virus that wiped out production. That's how I think it started. But uh, when did development begin for Dark Sea 2, and how did you land the role of producer? Well, I was hired by, uh, by Cyber Dreams to, uh, to, to fill a vacant producer role, and uh, I... Uh, I, I was originally hired to, the first project I worked on was Cyber Race. And I, I helped out in uh, quality assurance on that. But uh, once Cyber Race was was published, I then produced two games concurrently. I Have No Math and I'm a Scream and Dark Sea 2. So work on that would have begun approximately one year before the game was published. And how hard was it on you to work on Dark Seed 2 and I Know My Play Must Scream simultaneously? How did you deal with the stress of that? Uh, I I just just plowed my way through it. it. It's tough doing one large game, producing one large game at, at a time. I was doing two together. Plus also my, my uh, newborn son was going through medical difficulties. So he was in the hospital half the time while, I was, while uh, both games were in development. So that made it, made it especially difficult for me. Being the game takes place in... I, I'm sorry for your medical issues with the sun, by the way. I'm, I'm glad everything worked out well in development Every, and health. Yeah, he's fine now. Just wanted to add that he's in. A, he's, but. A, he's a healthy, happy 30-year-old now. Well, that's good to hear. And being this game takes place in Crowley, Texas, did you or any of the artists travel there for inspiration? Were any of the buildings in-game based on real locations? No. Uh, the, the designer of the game uh, lived in Plano, Texas for a period of time. And he sent us pictures of, of the area uh, around there that, that he had taken himself while he was living, living there. So we used some of that for reference, reference uh, material. Did HR Giger draw any custom artwork for Darkseed 2? No, none. Do you remember who drew the uh, behemoth? I don't even remember what the behemoth? I don't yeah, remember the, what the uh... behemoth is. It was the end game boss for Dark Sea 2. You're in the maze and you have to defeat it with the Sword of Justice, I believe. Oh boy, I forgot I forgot we we uh we we uh we called that creature the behemoth. because uh, when I hear behemoth, I think of uh I think of a creature from another of my games, Heroes of Might Magic 3. Uh I'm I'm sure whoever uh, that creature would have been based all of our all of our Dark World artwork was based on, on HR Giger artwork. Mm -hmm. So uh, that creature would have been as well. Interesting. But, yeah, Giger didn't didn't create anything new. We we just went through his archives, uh, all of his past work, and, and assembled uh, assembled everything based upon his already created artwork. And how was the writing process handled? Did you write a story outline for Raymond that detailed character arcs and plot events that uh, must have been present no, in the story? No, Raymond Benson created the story outline. Oh, he did. He created the story outline. Yes, he created the story outline. Uh, and then he uh, created, he wrote the, uh, he wrote the uh, game design and most of the dialogue. Then I hired a, another writer, Keith Herber, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, Raymond was no longer available. I uh, hired Keith Herber, who had, who had done a, written a lot of mo modules for the uh, Call of Cthulhu pen and paper role playing game. And I hired him to, to write some additional dialogues for us so to be correct so to state it was, it was that, just those two so it'd be correct to state that he had a lot of creative freedom with the project no it would be incorrect to state that because everything he did had to be approved by us gotcha gotcha i say he didn't have creative freedom but he wasn't given 
direction about what to do. He was giving feedback. I see. I see. So he would submit something to you and you guys would give feedback to him. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. And so do you know how the ending for Dark Sea 2 came to be? Was it always planned to have a singular bad ending? Yeah, I think I think it always was. I, I don't recall there being any discussions about any alternate endings. I think the the ending ending that we got was what was originally written. And did, do you think Mike Dawson really murdered everyone, or do you think Jimmy and Melissa were behind the deaths of Mayor Fleming and Doc Larson? Oh, I I think the intention always was that that Mike was indeed the killer, mm -hmm. as he descended into to madness from going back and forth between the. Uh, normal world in the dark world. What I really liked in that point of the story is how it starts shifting the normal world as well. When you walk into Paul's house and there's just dressers, just a room of dressers everywhere, you just start seeing the world just kind of slipping. Like, it was really interesting. Yeah, the, the dark world was really supposed to be a manifestation of Mike Dawson's madness. And uh, as, as you get deeper and deeper in the game, he becomes more and more insane. And yeah, we do discover that he is an insane serial killer. And Raymond has stated that you were supposed to be able to move Jack around after Mike Dawson expired, but there was an issue with programming. Is there any truth to that? I don't recall that as that, that as being a feature that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Did Mike Dawson have any creative input or any kind of involvement in the development of Dark Seed 2? The real Mike Dawson? Yep. No, Mike Dawson was a programmer on the original dark seed and his image and name was used for the protagonist character but he had left the company before i joined uh before i joined cyber dreams and started work on dark seed too so he had absolutely no involvement with the sequel have you ever we, had any, all we used was his name what was his name all we used was his name oh i got you got you have you ever had any conversations about Dark Seed 2 with the real Mike Dawson? Like, what did he think of the game if you did? Uh, I, we, I, I don't know if he actually even played the game. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I worked together at the Los Angeles Film School uh, years later. He, uh, he taught programming and I taught production and game design. Uh, and um, we, we talked about it very, very briefly. I think it wasn't until... Uh, until uh, my final final days at, at, at Los Angeles Film School that we decided to take a picture together holding the Dark Seed 2 packaging. Do but no, we, we never really discussed the game. I'm curious, do you still have that picture? I probably do someplace, yeah. It's just, it's just interesting. Like I, I really do wonder what he thinks of the game, what he thought of it. Yeah, again, I, I don't think he ever played the game. Mm-hmm. And back to Dark Sea 2, you felt on that you felt that Dark Sea 2 would go on to win all the awards and become a huge hit, while I have no map I'm screwing to have much more mod success. What made you feel this way? I think that's an overstatement. I thought I thought uh, Dark Sea 2 would be better received than mm -hmm. I have no mouth and I'm a scream. And the reason for that was that um mainly because uh uh, I have no math in my screen was a series of short games, essentially short little modules. Whereas, uh, whereas uh, uh, I thought uh, Dark Sea Two had a uh, a much more involved, grander story. Uh, I thought it had uh, more interesting puzzles. Uh, I really liked the uh, the Hall of Mirrors uh, sequence. They for going back and forth between the dark, uh, the dark world and the normal world, and uh, just just I, I thought it was a little bit more of an interesting story, but I proved to be wrong. I have no doubt that I'm screaming won all the awards, and and actually Dark Sea Two got very poor reviews. Why do you think that ended up happening? Like, what what were some of the what does the critics have to say about it? Um. I don't recall what exactly what the critics said. My own assessment of what went wrong with it is that uh, I kind of forgot that uh, I was making a game, and the number one rule of making a game is to be entertaining. I I was thinking more of uh, when I was creating it to, to more of a uh, more of a piece of literature, and I really wanted to portray madness in the game. Uh, as a result, I, I think I chose a voiceover actor that wasn't all that pleasant to listen to as he was going uh, more and more insane. 
so I, I think I, I just made a, a very poor choice in, in voiceover actors. And I think that really covered people's perceptions of the game. Do you also maybe feel the ending could have a bit to do with it as well? Because I, I feel like back in that time, having a just a solo bad ending might rub people the wrong way. No, I'm I'm very happy with the ending. Okay. Is there anything you could do would do differently if you go back in time? I originally talked to uh, talked to uh, an actor. Um, boy, his name is escaping me. It should come to me any moment. He started. He started in Battlestar Galactica. Richard, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to look it up. Hold on a second. Uh, he was. Uh, well, I bet everyone listening to this is screaming out his name. <laughs> Um, let me let me look at that. Battlestar Galactica 1970 TV series. Richard Hatch. There you go. Richard Hatch. I had met him uh, because he was speaking. Uh, he was speaking at a. Uh, he was he was doing a motivational lecture at a local chamber of commerce. And when I discovered that, I went down and, and listened to him. And he kind of looked like Mike Dawson a little bit. And I thought he had the right voice and he was the right age. So I talked to him about hiring him for the role. Uh, and he was interested. I don't know why I didn't proceed with that. Um, I wish I had. Uh, in hindsight, I thought uh, it would have given more publicity for the game. And also, I, I think it would, it would have been a better choice as a voiceover actor. And where would you rank Darkseid 2 out of all the games you've worked on? Oh, uh, let's see. I would rank it. I had to rank my games. Be Heroes of Mind Magic uh, three, then uh, then Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, The Prisoner, Ducktales, uh, Wilderness of Survival Adventure. Probably personally, I. Uh, I think Dark Sea Two would probably be six. And a little, well, little games are great. a little bonus question because I, I I thought about this before the interview. I, I was curious, where would you put L.A. Noir? I don't think I've ever heard you talk about that game before. Oh, L.A. Noir. Yes, it was. It wasn't. A, it was. It was just called Noir. No Noir. A shadowy thriller. Uh, I really like that game. I originally, uh, it was a game, it was a, uh, the last game I published at Cyber Dreams. And it was brought to us by a filmmaker by the name of Jeff Blythe. He had, he had written a complete game design document for it. And I originally turned it down uh, I, because it was an interactive movie game. And I didn't think that... Uh, interactive movie games would would do well uh, at, at that point. Uh, I think their time had passed. Uh, so I turned it down, but it was my boss who uh, who, who kind of pressured me into to accepting it. Uh, he, want, he wanted to go ahead and, and do it. So uh, I did, and uh, actually I was, I was proud of how it turned out. I thought it was, uh, uh we uh it was it was it wasn't it it was an interactive movie product we did a lot of filming all about los angeles but it was also we had photographs uh in addition to videos uh so we used uh photographs as as uh, as scenes within the games you could click on the photographs to go to different parts of the of of the city uh and we filmed a lot of interesting locations i, I thought it looked really good um thought it, we we had a very good cast of actors uh production wise I, I was really happy with it but uh it had again it was the problem was it was an interactive uh interactive movie type of product which means it had limited replayability so i think that 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 harmed its perception would you recommend fans of dark the two or odd no mouth and must cream to check it out for themselves oh I I mean, anyone check it out. I, 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 I liked it. I thought it was a, a good game. Uh, so, yeah, anyone who's interested in, 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 in my career or is interested in mysteries or, or 
you know, 1940s Los Angeles, uh, uh, the film noir. Uh, I check it out if, if if they can find it someplace. No, the L. I don't know why I keep calling it L.A. Noir. I don't know where the L.A. came in, but yeah, that I, noir. I think there's another game called in L.A. Noir. Oh, maybe that, maybe that's it. But yeah, Noir is actually the one game I haven't played from Cyber Dream, so I'm definitely interested in myself checking it out in the future. Yeah. Wait. Right. Yeah. Well, reaching up to my bookshelf. There you go. Noir, a shadowy thriller. Yeah, that's that's what you want to look for. I have one last question for you, David. Out of everything you've experienced while working on Dark Seed 2, what was the most interesting experience you've had? Oh my goodness, the most interesting experience was meeting H.R. Giger himself. Uh, 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 I and uh, our Cyber Dreams art director and the art director at Destiny Software Productions, which uh, uh, programmed the game, uh, we all traveled to Zurich, Switzerland to meet Giger. And uh, it, was, it was a really surreal experience. He lived in a modest little neighborhood. Uh, but uh, he was, uh, that his, his house looked indistinguishable from any other. But uh, he was only available in the evening to meet. And by the, it was, I think it was winter when we went to visit him. And so it got dark very early. So I, I think we traveled to his house at around five o'clock, five thirty in the evening. But then it was it was it was dark outside, and he was waiting for us on his doorstep. And it was all pitch black around except for one light shining down on him. And if you ever saw the poster for the film The Exorcist, that's exactly what it looked like. So we went up and we met Giger, and we went inside of his house, and. It was it was all floors, walls, and ceilings were all painted black. And his entire house was decorated with his artwork. And the table in his in his uh, in his living room was a uh, was uh, all it was all uh, uh, it was it was all decorated in his style, a biomechanical his biomechanical style. And he had chairs around it from his Giger bar, uh, uh, which had embedded metallic skulls in it. And so most of his house looked really creepy. So it's kind of a scary environment. But talking to him, he was, he was just kind of a funny guy. I remember him, uh, him uh, sitting down talking to us. Uh, and he's stroking his cap as he's talking to us. And suddenly... Suddenly his cat goes, and Giger goes, oh, Milky, Milky, oh, you stink, you farted, and throws and then puts the cat aside. And then he goes, oh, I am, I, I am a terrible host. I need to get you something to eat. So he go, goes out the door and goes down to the local store to get us uh, tea and cookies. So <laughs> he came across as being very unlike his... Uh, his artwork, the, his macabre artwork. He was, he was kind of, a, he was, he was kind of a funny, charming guy. Um, anyway, we, uh, uh, after we, we kind of got to know each other a little bit. Uh, we went to show him progress on the game so far, and uh, uh, we went to. So we showed it. We showed him. Uh, I think we we'd gone maybe a quarter or less than a quarter of the game done and he's looking at it he goes you know what i have an idea this is a game you should do instead you should have it should be all about walking across these catwalks and then going up these stairs to a top of the pyramid and when you reach the top of the pyramid you discover you're at the bottom of another pyramid so you go up to the top and you discover you're at the bottom of another pyramid. And that's what you have to keep doing over and over in the game. And I said, you know, that's that's an interesting idea. You know, I wish we could do it, but this is a sequel to Dark Seed 1, which is a uh, adventure game and a mystery story. And people will be disappointed 
uh, disappointed if we don't do that. But you know what? I really like your idea of catwalks. So we'll put we'll put catwalks all over the dark world. And so that's how I was able to dissatisfy him. Uh, uh, but uh, we met him for a couple more days, uh, showing him little bits of the game here and there, and uh, and uh, I'll pose for pictures at the end. But uh, that, no, that that was my favorite part of the entire experience was meeting Giger uh, over a couple of days. I'm curious during the meeting, like when he had his uh, pyramid idea. Did he ever elaborate a little bit further on the pyramid idea, like what the player was supposed to do and how the game was supposed to end? No. No, he's not a game designer. Mm -hmm. he, he was just thinking in terms of visuals. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for your time, David. Is there anything else at all you'd like to say to the people watching before we bid adieu? Like anything else about Dark Seed 2? Anything in general you want to say to the people? Oh goodness! Uh, it's been so long since I worked on uh, Dark Seed Two. Um, that was uh, th we had a lot of very talented people working on it, from Raymond Benson to to Keith Herber. Uh, I, I thought the music in the game was was really good. Definitely. I, I, I forgot the the name of the music composer. I wish, wish I did remember it off the top of my head. But music was good. Destiny Software Productions did it. Did great job on the programming and on the uh on the uh on the dark world artwork incorporating the giggers artwork i also hired a a former art director from disney that i worked with when, when, when i was at disney uh to do all the normal world artwork and I, I thought the normal world artwork was really great too so we had a lot of fantastic people working on it uh i'd, I'd ask people to give dark seed to a second look and maybe a Maybe maybe now you'll they'd enjoy it uh, after all this time. I, I definitely think they would. I, I feel like visual novels, like I, 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 like it's not a visual novel per se, but I, I feel like those games have more of appreciation nowadays with a lot of dialogue. So I, I definitely, and I've seen it on YouTube as well. Retrospectives, modern retrospectives on Dark Seed Two, mm -hmm. and it seems like people are appreciating the game more as the years go by. Well, I hope so. Uh, we had a great time working on it, and I, I enjoyed it while testing it. So, uh, so yeah, take a second look at it and, and see if you enjoy it now, 25 years later or however long it's been. Oh, that's, oh man, it's, yeah, it's 25. No, no, 25, 35 years later, I think. Uh, no, oh, it is 35 years later almost. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And well, there you have it, folks. You know, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the upload. Uh, farewell, everybody. Bye. Bye.